What's up everyone? I hope you're doing well. It's been over a year since I've done any kind of uh, mass start normal bike race and I'm excited that this Saturday I'm going to do the Huffmaster Grasshopper which is an unsanctioned road gravel style event in Northern California just a little bit north of the Bay Area. So from where um, I live in the East Bay it's like an hour and a half straight north in the Central Valley and it covers about 90 miles for the long course and about 56 miles, I think, for the short course. It's gonna be half road, half gravel, mostly like smooth fire roads and frontage roads that are not very technical. And there's a little bit of climbing, but it's just nothing crazy. And it's gonna be fun, I'm looking forward to it. As long as it's safe and I get a good workout and I feel like I rode hard and well, I'll be excited about the day. For me, the last race I did was the Sweetwater Grasshopper, which is on the, along the coast north of the Bay Area. Uh, that happened last February, I think it was. Maybe it was early March, but it was right before the lockdowns happened for COVID. And now that I'm vaccinated and races are starting again, I'm hoping to do a few races, this one included. This is the first race that I've done uh, in, in over a year since the last Grasshopper. So that's really exciting. And it's kind of fun because it's a mixed uh, terrain event. So it takes a little bit of the pressure off for some of the tactics involved with road racing. And it's like, I don't know, I don't have any really particularly um, high expectations for it because I haven't been racing lately. A lot of the people that I'll be racing against haven't been racing lately. And some of the riders that are racing it have been racing and are probably in really great shape and you know have different priorities and, and um, different levels of training than I have right now. I've been consistently trying to do solid training with hard workouts and longer rides when I can fit them into my schedule, but I've been, you know, pretty constrained recently, so I haven't been able to do five or six hour rides every week and 15 hour weeks every week like I would normally want to be doing. So it'll be fun and I'm looking forward to it. And I know that I have decent fitness, but it's definitely not my peak. So I'm trying to have reasonable expectations, but also go into it anxious to put in a hard effort and have fun doing it. Anyway, I have a number of clients that are doing it and for multiple uh, clients across different fields, a lot of them have been asking questions about um, nutrition and race tactics and just how to approach the race as a whole. So I wanted to make a quick video just kind of summarizing my approach to the race as far as tactic tactics are concerned and how I think about the course and how to race it and also things like nutrition and equipment and just getting ready for the race and getting your head straight before you go into it. And, you know, I'll go over the course. So it's obviously very specific to this particular event, but I think it's uh, a lot of the wisdom that might be had in this video could be useful for other similar events that are, you know, mostly road, a little bit of mixed terrain or road races that are um, of a similar style, but mostly flat, moderate climbs, and just tough from attrition more than anything. So anyway, just keep that in mind and I'll kind of go over some of the key points that I talked about with my athletes that are doing the race and hopefully this is useful to you if you're doing it or if you're looking at doing another race similar. So looking at the course, it's about 89 miles almost. It's pancake flat for the first 24 miles approximately. And then from 24 to about 40, miles or 41 miles, it's basically still flat. The profile makes it look like it's an uphill section of road, but if you look at it, it's like an average gradient of 0.7%. So in my mind, I would regard the first half of this race as being totally flat and entirely, um, the only thing that matters at that point is drafting and being efficient and staying with the group. Uh, and if there are any splits because people attack or because it's crosswindy, you wanna be in the front most split that you can. Then at about mile 40 and a half, you go up this little climb, which is two and a half miles with 6.6% 6 6 average gradient. Um, it's not a huge climb, you only gain 800 feet, but it does ramp up and get steeper towards the end. So the last you know, little bit is eight and a half percent average gradient with a max of only like 10 and a half percent. So it never gets really steep, but it is progressively steeper and it gets just harder and harder throughout the whole climb. And just like any climb in a road race or a gravel race, people are gonna want to you know push the pace on the climb. Somebody's gonna want to attack over the top of the climb or attack as it gets steeper and they feel that it's a good time for them to go. So if you're racing it, you wanna be at the front most split that you can make over this main climb 
And then you go down this little descent. It's a really shallow gradient for a little while. And then it ramps up a little bit, but it's really never steep for this kind of intermediate climb in the middle. Um, like this stretch is only 2.6% average gradient. So you keep on going, you descend, it's basically flat. Like I would regard this first climb as being a deciding factor in the race. You're on some gravel for a little while, um, then you're back on the road through this valley, and then you turn off um, at the end for this short little climb, which is just shy of 70 miles into the race, and then you descend into the central valley, and it's basically dead flat all the way to the end. But the interesting thing about this last stretch is that you will have put in a lot of miles into your legs. Even though it's never steep, you have a mix of climbing throughout those kind of intermediate miles, and there's a bunch of gravel in there. So even though it's mostly pretty smooth, it's more fatiguing than if you're on the road, and there's a lot more drag on your bike. So it takes more work for everyone, even if you're getting a draft farther back in the field. So throughout that whole middle section, I would just try to stay with whatever group you're with, you know, rotate in a pace line, get a draft most of the time, don't do a lot of work, don't be tempted to just push the pace or attack randomly in the middle of the race. If somebody else is attacking and there's a little bit of a split going, because there's like three or four or five riders breaking off from your group of 10 or 15 or 20, you know, you might want to go with them if you're feeling good and you think that the that you are um, relatively strong relative to the other people in your group. But if you're really trying to just like make it through the race, don't follow the moves, just stay with the group that you're in. If there's a big split, if you think that you're able to hang with the, the faster group, you know, go ahead and make the split, but don't be aggressive attacking or pushing the base on the front in the gravel sections. That would generally just be a waste of your effort and energy and people behind you can just get a draft and it's not gonna really uh, be the right call strategically. You do wanna watch for splits on this last climb so, you know, mile 67 and a half, let's say, to mile 69, there's a bit of a climb. And then you descend down into the valley. So like that whole stretch can be um, a place where splits will definitely happen because people are tired. They're already three hours or four hours into the race, depending on what field you're in. And then once you get back into the valley, um, you hop onto the road, but then you're going mostly east for the last uh, eight or nine miles of the race. And it's probably gonna be a crosswind coming from the left. So at that point, anyone that is pushing the pace or attacking, everyone behind them gets little to no draft depending on how much of a wind there is. And it's easy to gutter people because if it's coming from the left, people just line up on the right side of the road and everyone is fighting to get a little bit of a draft, but there really isn't much of a draft to be had. So that creates an opportunity for people that are on the same team to work together or for splits to happen and then to have small groups working together. You have like three or four or five riders pace lining together in an echelon. And that can be really hard if you're trying to close the gap uh, behind, you know, riders that are doing that. So you just really want to be very mindful of being efficient the first, you know, half of the race when you're probably mostly going into a headwind as you're going north. You have a little bit of a crosswind um, from mile, let's say, 22 to mile, let's say, 36. There's like a tendency for a crosswind to exist there coming from the right to the left. So definitely be safe. Don't do anything that is um, going to put people or yourself at risk. But you just want to stay on the front end of the splits through that section and then get over the climbs in the middle of the race, but especially the big climb at you know, mile 40 to 43. And then those intermediate climbs, like they'll be selective, but it'll mostly just wear people out. A lot of people will be able to stay in the group, but they're just gonna get progressively more and more tired so that this last climb at mile 67 is really just gonna give a, an opportunity for people who are stronger and still have the legs to attack and drop people and hopefully make it safely down that descent, hopefully with a gap ahead of people behind them. At least that's gonna be the aspiration of the people that do that. And then that last 10 miles, you know, it's going to be tough because it might be a stronger wind later in the day. And, you know, it, it's just going to be a race of attrition and it's going to be determined by the crosswind sections in that, like, second quarter of the race and crosswinds the last few miles of the race. So try to stay in the front of the splits. Try to stay in the frontmost group that you can on the climbs. 
don't murder yourself, you know, 20 miles in to make a split in the crosswind. If you're really on the rivet, you know, stay with the group that you're with. But if you're feeling strong, try to be up at the front, try to be up at the front over the climbs and whatever happens at the end, you know, it could be individual riders, it could be small groups, depending on what field you're in, but um, it's gonna be tough if it's windy and it'll probably just be the strongest few riders who can make it through that crosswind stretch at the end. If by some stretch of the imagination, it's not that windy, that kind of makes it much easier to stay in the group that last 10 or 15 miles. And if you get down the gravel descent and uh, you're with a group, you can just follow wheels, get a draft. If you're feeling good, you can attack or you can wait for a sprint. If you're not feeling good, just do what you can to hold the wheels and get to the finish line as, as uh, far forward in the group as you can. But it should be good, it should be a fun race. Um, halfway through, there's a feed zone where you can drop off bottles and stuff and label them. Um, be so before the race, you can drop off a bag with your name labeled on it with some food and nutrition and hydration that you can pick up and exchange halfway through the race. Um, if you are just trying to get through the race and you are um, just trying to have a good time and not racing it uh, very aggressively, you should definitely do that. I think a lot of people that are racing it might have a hydration pack or they might have three or four bottles at the start and try to get through the race without stopping at the feed zone, especially for the pro men and the pro women. It's gonna be four and a half to five hours and you can get through that with four bottles and stopping at the feed zone to exchange bottles um, might be nice, but it might be something that slows them down. So I'm not sure what people will be doing. Um, I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna just start with four bottles and see if I can do the whole thing um, mostly comfortably <laughs> with only four bottles. It doesn't look like it's gonna be very hot, but it will be warm and you really want to have enough fuel and enough hydration to finish the race well. Okay, and on that note, I'm gonna to transition to talking about um, nutrition and hydration and getting ready the few days before the event. So first off, with your equipment, make sure you know what you wanna be riding with your bike, your tires, your um, tire pressure, and get everything set up you know, a few days ahead. Make sure you can ride your stuff and make sure it's working well. If you're concerned because you've been riding your bike for a while and you don't have a new drivetrain on there, you know, check your chain wear, make sure everything is working well, make sure everything is lubricated. Uh, don't leave things till Friday night to be changing your tires or your chain if you can help it. Ideally, it's nice if you can, you know, make sure everything's working well, make sure your chain's not worn out, make sure your cassette's not worn out like a week or more before an event like this. And if anything does need to be changed, you can change it early in the week, ride it multiple times throughout the week and make sure everything's working well before you go to the race on Saturday. Um, personally, I was going back and forth between different wheel options, different tire options, and um, settled on what I wanna ride this weekend. Again, it's mostly just like, I wanna be confident in my equipment, I'm not trying to win it, but you know, I wanna make sure that I have the easiest time that I can, and so I went back and forth with my choices, but I set everything up, I rode it today, a little bit of road, a little bit of gravel, and everything feels like it's working mostly pretty well. I'll just like make any tweaks to it um, before I go riding tomorrow, and make sure everything's set on my Friday ride before I ride, ride, ride the race on Saturday. And for hydration and nutrition, you know, probably Wednesday or Thursday before Saturday race are the last times that you're gonna ride, you know, maybe a little bit longer or a little bit harder. And the first one or two meals right after those sessions, uh, whatever your last hard session is, is one of your biggest opportunities to replenish lost glycogen and rehydrate and just bounce back as quickly as possible so that you're well fueled and you're well hydrated going into the weekend. After those first couple of meals, you know, it's a big ride, even for the pros, four and a half to five hours is like a pretty solid ride. And there's a lot of calories that are gonna be burned. And it's really nice if you can go into it with a full stock of glycogen in your legs. So Thursday and Friday before the race, I wouldn't be afraid to have an extra 100 to 200 grams of carbohydrate in your diet in those last two days. So like an extra 200 on Thursday, an extra 100 to 200 on Friday, so that you can hopefully have the best glycogen storage going into the race on Saturday. Saturday morning, just have a light breakfast that's comfortable and is gonna sit well with you. You don't need to eat a lot that morning if you have eaten well the days before. A lot of people get that backwards and they eat a really big breakfast where if they were well-fueled beforehand, you know, you're know you not riding your bike before the race, so you don't need to worry about um, stocking up on gly muscle glycogen from you know whatever happened Thursday and Friday on Saturday morning. Whatever you had going into, Saturday, uh, into Friday night, 
is kind of where you're at on Saturday morning and your breakfast isn't going to have a huge impact in the same way that, you know, Thursday and Friday are going to have. Likewise, you know, hydrate well going into it. Don't be afraid to get some salt so that you can absorb and retain water so that you're very well hydrated at the start of the race. If you don't eat a lot of salt, you know, you don't retain water as well. Um, those two things go together. That's why all drink mixes have sodium in them. So just, you know, have a little bit of salty stuff. Luckily, it's not going to be super hot. It's not going to be one of those days where you're just like sweating buckets of fluid, but you're going to want at least four or five bottles throughout the race. And you want to start off not already in the hole for hydration. So do a good job of drinking and taking in some salt Thursday and Friday before a race like this. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's it. That's just like the big picture of how I think about the race. You know, try to stay at the front as much as you can whenever there might be a crosswind. So if you're on a headwind stretch or a tailwind stretch, get ready for a turn in the road. It's gonna be a crosswind and it's gonna be hard. So stay at the front on those splits. Watch for the steeper portions of the climbs. Look at the profile. Sometimes those bumps in the profile can be misleading. If you kind of narrow it down to shorter periods, you can see whether or not it's actually a substantial climb. So I would identify that big climb midway through the race and that little climb three quarters of the way through the race as the probably the biggest deciding factors. That stuff in the middle, I think is mostly just kind of tire people out. Some people will get dropped. There might be a split in the field, but I would probably assume that it's mostly just hard on that first climb. Maybe there's a split, a lot of attrition, and then probably splits on that last climb before the descent into the valley and the finishing, you know, 10 miles or so. And whenever possible, try to get a draft, try to stay hydrated, take in calories, be as efficient as possible so that when the attrition happens, you're hopefully on the front end of the race and not the back end of the race. But um, I don't know, I think that's about it. You know, it's just like any hard race uh, or any hard ride, like just go into it knowing that it's gonna be hard and preparing yourself mentally to suffer through a lot of effort, but also, you know, enjoy that. That's like the whole point. Hopefully you know kind of where you might stand relative to other riders and hopefully you know from doing hard workouts what level of intensity and what level of discomfort you can sustain for that type of duration. And just, you know, listen to your body throughout the race and do the best that you can. And beyond that, there's nothing we can do. So don't stress about it. Some people that are in the pro men or the pro women's fields have you know a lot of really strong competitors and that could be daunting um or if you know that you have like national champions in your field or whatever it is like there's a lot of strong athletes in this area but that's always the case just be very aware from all of your training and very confident in your capabilities based on you know all the miles you've gotten in and all the hard workouts that you've done that you can um, have an honest and clear assessment of what you're capable of and just make sure that you squeeze everything out of your body on race day and that's all that we can ask for and hope for. So anyway, if you're doing it, I hope you have a good time. If you're not doing it, but you um, are maybe thinking about doing a similar event, hopefully some of these tips were helpful to you and I'll see you in the next one. And if you like this, you know, let me know what is useful to you and I'll try to make more content like that and subscribe to my channel, like this video and all that. Um, I hope you're doing well. I'll see you later, bye.